Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I am Michael A. Grimm. Welcome to the Multi-Voice Entertainment. I'm the Multi-Voice Reviewer. I have many voices, but one opinion. And today, I'm going to do something which I haven't tackled before. I'm going to be talking about the Justice League. Now, I'm not going to be talking about the, um, the, um, the movie starring Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, and Gal Gadot. I'm going to delve into the calicomb of Justice League, in which I'm going to be talking about the one that pretty much started its origin from the comic books. I'm talking about the OG member of the Justice League. And one... But of course, before I'm going to get to it, I know that there were other... One thing you guys should know about is that there was another Justice League movie back in, in 2007. And it is Justice League Immortal. Created by George Miller. Now, too bad that that, uh, that George Miller's version of the Justice League didn't go well. I mean, I mean... He had the cast going, he had the story going, he even had the script going. But the problem was that it couldn't make the movie is because of the uh, writer's strike happened in Hollywood. It's because of the damn studio wouldn't even give the writers... Uh, I mean, they weren't even paying them enough to write good scripts. And that's when that strike started. But hey, it could have been worse. It would have ended up like the uh, on-aired pilot of the Justice League America back in 1997. But thy rest. And of course, if any of you ever read the comic book or seen the animated movie, Justice League The New Frontier, it pretty much sh showed the go golden age of how the Justice League started. But of course, it was written by that one comic book writer. Now... Now it's time for me to talk about the OG members of the Justice League. And one thing that um, Zack Snyder, who made the movie, got it right. It wasn't Superman who started the League. It was none other than the Dark Knight himself, Batman. Batman, a.k.a. Bruce Wayne, what made him become Batman in the first place? Well, obviously, it is the trauma he had. When he was eight years old, he saw his, his parents murdered right in front of his eyes. And after that trauma, I mean, things like that can happen in real life, in real people. And he would took the path of revenge, but... Back in the early years of the comic books of Batman, he did kill bad guys at the time. But ever since the comic book legislation, they made sure that no superheroes should take a life. So therefore, Batman never kills criminals. And the one who killed his parents, his name was Joe Chill. And Joe Chill knew who Batman really was. And there was one scene they did where Joe Chill... He thought that Batman is coming to kill him because he knew what he did to his parents. But one thing Batman did to Joe Chill, though, he forgave him for what he'd done. And Joe Chill was nice enough to keep his identity a secret. It wasn't like on the on the Batman Begin where Joe Chill was giving out all the information about the Falcones and then gets killed. Joe Chill lasted a lot longer in the comics than they did in the movie. And a lot of people say that Batman is exactly a pulp hero. Because if any of you ever read the pulp magazines of The Spider, The, Sh the Shadow, and um, also um, Zorro, and of course um, The Black Bat. I mean... Batman, he's just a normal, average human being with no superpowers, but there is one certain superpower that he does have. He is a rich millionaire. And I know some of you are going to be telling me, um, 
I know some of you are going to be telling me that um, the whole bat credit card was ridiculous. Uh-huh. Batman is rich. He can create a false identity and therefore have a bat credit card. I mean, it's not even a big surprise if Elon Musk has his Musk card or Bill Gates have his Gate card or Trump has his Trump card. I mean, it's not like that, uh, that he would create his own money, the golden Trump dollar bill and the gold coin of Trump. <laughs> uh, how'd that get there? <laughs> but anyway, one thing that it is a superpower to Batman is, of course, that he's a rich billionaire. And what he did is he spent most of his money on gadgets and gizmos and hit and he used the bat as fear to strike those on the hearts of those who do evil so he's always a night person who goes out at night scaring the pants off the criminals while while fighting crime and make sure that there isn't another eight-year-old child who goes through the same trauma like he did and that what makes batman awesome and, of course, he doesn't kill bad guys, so years of traveling around the world before he went back to Gotham, he learned martial arts and and other stuff, even studied Krav Maga and ninjutsu. And one thing he also learned is from his uh, butler, Alfred. He was like a second father figure to him. And one thing that's really awesome about Alfred Pennyworth is is that he was a member of British intelligence. So pretty much, Alfred is a secret agent man, secret agent man. Hey, he's given you a number and taken away your name. <laughs> but it is true, Alfred was a member of British intelligence. Der I mean back in his youth, before he decided to become a butler for the Wayne family. And I guess that kind of taught Bruce Wayne how to be more like the James Bond type, because a lot of people do think Batman is like James Bond in a way, because he has all these gizmos and gadgets, and always escapes death because he studied uh, escape art. I mean, he's an escape artist. And uh, every time when the bad guy thinks that they got him, he always escapes and always goes like, Fooya! <laughs> now, now let's get to the other superhero. The man who is the last son of Krypton. And I'm talking about the Man of Steel himself, Superman. Now... Superman, or he go by his alien name, Cal-El, which uh, he was adopted by the family called the Clark, called the Kents, and therefore named him Clark Kent. You see, when I tell people that Superman is an alien, one thing that always pops in their head is because he's an alien, that means he's going to conquer Earth. No! No, that's not it! You see, Superman is an alien, right? And he came from a planet that was destroyed. I mean, his father, jor knew that the planet was going to be destroyed and nobody listened to him. And the only way he thought it would be a good idea, he should let his son survive but live on Earth. And he was completely aware that it's the yellow sun from Earth would give him his superpowers. And... He starts having godlike powers, but he doesn't want people to worship him like a god. Because he was raised by a family of farmers who taught him the value of a human life and study and learn about the earth and be optimistic over things that happens. And that's the difference between Superman and Batman. Superman is optimistic. Batman is realistic. He sees the reality of things, while Superman, he's optimistic. He can see the good things at the end. 
That's why he. That's why Batman he represents fear against those who do evil, while Superman represents hope. And that's why he has the S on his chest is because it's his family crest. It stands for hope. So. Years of growing up with the Kent family, learning a lot about how to become human, that's when he took the persona of Clark Kent, mild matter reporter, so he should be, so that's why he can observe the world as Clark Kent. But if he's Superman, he's a center of attention because all these superpowers and things he can do. And just like how he was in the story, Lois Lane always loves Superman, but always thinks of Clark Kent as this, um, as this nerdy guy that not most beautiful girls go for. Most beautiful girls always go for chiseled jaw, handsome, good-looking, dashing guys, and don't go for the, um, the spineless, nervous, nerdy guy. Hmm. Now, now, uh, enough about, now, I told my part about Superman. Let's talk about the woman who was the first famous um, DC superhero. Now, of course, there were some other female superheroes. So, Wonder Wo so she's not the first, but she was the most popular. And it is the Amazonian princess herself, Wonder Woman. Now, unlike... Uh, Unlike uh, Batman, who's just a normal guy with no superpowers and who goes through a childhood trauma, and Superman being the last of his kind of, a, of an alien species, Wonder Woman comes from Greek mythologies. A long time ago, the Greek gods did create a plant, an island where it's a women's only island where they live peacefully with no men involved because they always believe that most men always think about war. And, and of course, most of the women from, from the Amazonian, known as Paradise Island, Themyscira, are more peaceful. And back then, they did have an original origin story where, where her mother create, I mean, carved a statue of her child and call upon the gods to give it life and then boom. But nowadays in the modern era, they made her based more on the Greek mythology. And one thing I heard about the Greek mythology is this. Zeus, the emperor of the gods, I mean, he was good with his people, but he could be vengeful if they peed him off. And another thing about Zeus I always hear Every time when Zeus has his eye on a mortal woman who is so beautiful and attractive, well, let's just say that Zeus never learned to keep his toka on. He shapeshifts into a bird, flies into their house, shapeshifts himself into their husband, and takes advantage, and when he's done, he turns back into a bird and flies back to his home. And... And every time when he does that, there's a lot of demigods. And all because his wife, ex-sister, Hera, cannot give birth, but the women that he take advantage of does. And that's why all these demigods happen. That's where Hercules came from, Perseus come from. So therefore, Diane, aka Wonder Woman, is actually the daughter of Zeus. So she's a demigod. Now, in her story, she meets this uh, soldier named Steve Trevor. Now, in the comic book, she was in World War II, but I see in the movie they want her to get involved in World War I instead of World War II, which makes a lot of better sense because Captain America was in World War II. But um, she meets Steve Trevor, Steve Trevor saying that he's a soldier from America, battle against the Germans and such, so therefore she gets involved and takes Steve Trevor with her to America and go by the name Diana Prince and therefore becomes the Amazonian princess who battled against the Germans during the war and now, she, and of course being a Themyscira, I mean... The Themysceras are immortal, so they've been around even back in Alexander the Great's time. 
they're that old. And one thing I also heard that um, that the, the Justice League wasn't the only team that she got herself into. She was also a, a group of another superhero team was before the Justice League was, of course, the Justice Society of America. But one thing I heard in the comics of what they did for Wonder Woman when they made her become the member of the uh, Justice Society, they made her into a secretary. Ridiculous. So thank God she joins the Justice League instead. And those are the greatest trilogies that started the whole group team. And now let's talk about the other characters who became also the member of the Justice League who become proud. And I'm talking about the Scarlet Speedster himself, The Flash. Now, one thing I heard about The Flash, his name is Barry Allen. And one thing he worked as is he is a forensic detective. He works with the police on forensics. All because a long time ago, his mother was murdered by Reverse Flash, but his father was blamed for the death of his mom. So his father ended up in jail, so he was raised at... So he was kind of raised by his uncle or whoever he had in his family. And he studied criminologists because Barry Allen himself had a sneaking suspicion that um, he has a feeling that his dad didn't really kill his mother. He knew that there was someone else who did it, and his father was framed. And when he was doing some experiments in the laboratory, a freak accident happened. A bolt of lightning hit him, mixing all the chemicals into his skin, and therefore gave him speed ability. Hmm. Now, of course, he wasn't the first Flash, but he was the most remembered Flash compared to this other Flash goes by the name of Jay Godric. Now, Jay Godric was the first Flash before Barry Allen, but Barry Allen was the most memorable. Now, we, now we're done with the speedster, let's get to the... to a green galactic police force known as Green Lantern. Now, Green Lantern, one thing I know about him is that uh, his real name is Hal Jordan. And Hal Jordan was a fighter pilot who was going to be testing a new jet until, until that one Lantern member named Abin Sir was dying so he was using his ring to find the next wielder. I mean, kind of like on Harry Potter where the wand chooses the wizard. Well, in the Green Lantern's world, the ring chooses the wielder. Hmm, imagine that. Maybe that's why this blue lantern ring chews me. Because I have so much hope in my heart that therefore I become a blue lantern member. But anyway, the idea of a guy with a power ring, I mean, that they took that idea from Lord of the Rings, where the where any of you remember the story about uh, Sauron and his ring of power, and anybody who used the ring can feel the power from it and want to use it for their own benefit. I mean, they took it in a good way for the Green Lantern. And now... Unlike uh, Barry Allen the Flash, Hal Jordan wasn't exactly the first Green Lantern. The first Green Lantern is none other than Alan Scott. Now, another thing I also heard from everybody, everybody always kept telling me about Green Lantern being gay. It's not Hal Jordan Green Lantern who is gay, it's Alan Scott Green Lantern being gay. But, here's the thing. The Alan Scott I was talking about is the Golden Age Alan Scott. I'm talking about Earth 2 Alan Scott. 
Earth 2 Alan Scott was the one. He's from an alternate universe where there's an Earth that is similar to ours. And of course, anybody can be Green Lantern because we have the first, um, I mean, ever since they did the Justice League uh, animated series and Unlimited, they had their first Black Green Lantern, which is Jon Stewart. Oh yeah, I almost forgot the two other members of the Green Lantern Corps, the pain-in-the-ass redhead Guy Gardner, and the strong-willed, uh, struggling artist Kyle Rayner. And now in the modern era, we have two Green Lantern members, a Muslim Green Lantern member named Simon Bass, and Jessica Cruz, who is Hispanic. But one way I would say about Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, is like, he's like what if Han Solo found the Ring of Power. And that's exactly what Hal Jordan is. He's a lot like Han Solo on the Star Wars franchise. Now let's talk about another member who is from the sea. The king of Atlantis himself, Aquaman. Now, Aquaman, known as Arthur Curry, one thing I heard about him is that uh, his mother was from Atlantis. She was the queen of Atlantis, and of course the people from Atlantis, they go by Greek beliefs, just like the Themyscira. Now, Arthur Curry, his mother was, was the queen of Atlantis, while his father was just a, a normal fisherman who just fell in love with Arthur's mother. So pretty much Arthur Curry, aka Aquaman, he shares the best of both worlds. He is part Amazonian, part human. And um, he has the ability to communicate with fishes. He creates a wave force. And um, anybody who shoots him with a water hose, he's immune to it because he he's from Atlantis. So spray water wouldn't even phase him. I mean, back then in the 70s, they kind of made him a useless character because he's the king of Atlantis in a, in a dry land world. But he becomes more interest. But right now they made him more interesting because he can communicate with fish and communicate with underwater creatures. That's pretty much something you could expect out of a Lovecraftian story. All I know, he could summon Cthulhu, and we're all in deep. Anyway, now let's get to the other alien besides Superman, a fish out of water alien that the people from his planet also died, so he becomes the last of his kind, and trying to get along in this world is, of course, the shape-shifting Martian himself, Martian Manhunter. Now, Martian Manhunter, one thing I gotta say about him, his real name is John Jones, and he was from the planet Mars. And uh, one thing that he... And one thing it did happen, the first time he ended up on Earth was, of course, a scientist who goes by the name of Dr. Saul Erd Erdell. He had a machine that can communicate with people from other planets, and it teleported John Jones into his world. And, and people just, they couldn't stand the sight of his look because of his Martian features, and they kind of think of him as an alien because the story was back in the 60s and it was during the Cold War where they couldn't trust people from other countries, especially from other planets. So, but John Jones was able to read minds. He kind of has the same power and ability just like Superman. He is super strong. He can fly, but he can also read minds and go through walls. But the weakness he has, unlike Superman and the Kryptonite, John Jones, he's afraid of fire. And fire is his only weakness. And sadly, the doctor couldn't teleport him back on Mars because he 
got old and sick, so he was unable to take him back home. So now he was stuck on Earth until he finally did end up back on Mars. But much of his surprise, every his green people from Mars are all dead, including his wife and child that he had on Mars. So he become the last of his kind. And the reason why they die is because of a group of other aliens, the White Martians, were involved in this. And of course, since he can shapeshift into other people, he uh, disguised himself as a, as a detective, as a private investigator. That's why he was able to solve mysteries, on, just like Batman, because Batman is like a detective. And um, also, he shapeshift himself as a secret agent until he was able to join the Justice League because his Martian ability is quite useful for the team. And, um, and he's also the, um, the sympathetic character. Like, every time when somebody has problems, he's always there to tell them what they should do and how to face things that are problems to them. Now, let's get to the newest member who also appeared in the New 52, the one I don't really care of, but also appeared on the Rebirth, which I'm kind of okay with, is of course, and they also made him appear in the Zack Schneider film, none other than... Cyborg. Now, Cyborg, one thing I know about him is that he is a football, he is a, uh, a, um, a high school football player who goes by the name of Victor Stone. And, um, and one thing about him, he, uh, got into a horrible accident that his father, Salas, and his wife, I'm trying to get her name right, um, Eleanor, Eleanor Stone, Stone. They were scientists, and they were trying to find a way to help their son. And all of a sudden, they found the mother box, which it's got something to do with Dark Side and all that other stuff, the new gods. And all of a sudden, the mother box connected itself to Cy to um, to Victor, and it rebuilt his body. So now he is part human, part machine, with a technology that is way advanced and is not from this world. So he can pretty much uh, go through the boom tube, shoot, and summon a big laser on his hand when anything is a threat. And he can hack into technology and such. So pretty much he's a very advanced. But of course, the Justice League wasn't the only team that he was a part of, because before he was a part of the Justice League, he was a part of a group of teenager superheroes called the Teen Titans. And then after that, we had, and of course for those of you who are going to be uh, bothering me about some of the members, I mean... I mean, I remember in the animated series, they thought that they had Wonder Woman, who's like the only woman in the group, so therefore they always introduce Hot Girl. And of course, in the 90s, in the 90s, they wanted a comic relief character, so they introduce Plastic Man. And, of course, when they did the animated movie of the New 52 Justice League, they decided to introduce Shazam! Captain Marvel. But one thing I do know for sure, when it comes to all these original OG members of the Justice League, they always had... I mean, some of you are going to be saying, uh, how many are there? Well... Pretty much a lot, because every single DC Superheroes becomes a member of the Justice League. Now, if you ask me, my thoughts about the... Now, if it, now 
I never seen the uh, Zack Schneider version of the uh, Justice League. It's because I don't have HBO Max on my television. We we don't have HBO Max at all. So I wouldn't mind to get um, the the uh, the Zack Schneider cut version of the Justice League on Blu-ray. At least I can enjoy it on Blu-ray. I wouldn't mind. And of course, my thoughts about the villain. I mean, Steppenwolf? Seriously? I mean, that's kind of a weak villain they choose on that. If you ask me, I think I would pick the one who was on the original comics of the, the introduction of the Justice League called Brave and the Bold. Where they dealt with that one villain, Starro. Yeah, that's right. The same sorrow that they use in the Suicide Squad. The second one. And of course, another thing I really do like the most, since the superheroes created their own league, Lex Luthor decided to form a team of their own known as the Injustice League. I mean that wouldn't I mean that would be pretty cool to do something like that. Anyway, this is uh this is all I can say about the Justice League and and of course one biggest one biggest question of all, I mean out of everything of out of all these heroes, what brought them all together in the first place? It's the universe they're in. They're in the DC Universe, so therefore, that's why they're all connected. Back then, they would have been kind of separated and never had a chance to connect. But uh, in nowadays, they decided to connect them all together because they're all in the same universe, this DC Universe. And, um, I mean, it's kind of hard to believe a, uh, a man with no superpowers, with a childhood trauma... The last alien on Earth, an Amazonian princess, a red speedster, a galactic police officer with a ring, a king of Atlantis, a shape-shifting Martian, and of course, a teenager with a high-tech technology, all of a sudden grouped together to form a league against a greater threat. And that, I mean, so back then people would say that would be nonsense, but... That they're shticked. <laughs> Imagine that. Now, I did mention about the other league before it. And um, one thing I had to say about the song. I mean... Wait a minute. <laughs> the Justice Society. If those of you enjoyed this uh, Justice League uh, Secret Origin video and you guys want me to talk about the Justice Society, please leave a comment down below and hit like and subscribe for more. And um, I want to end it off with this one. I mean, I'm the multi-voice reviewer. I remember it so I can jog your memory. And I'm going to end it off with a certain song. He said one and one and one is three. He got to be good looking cause it's so hard to see. Come together right now. Come together right now over me.